Hello, I'm Jasper. Welcome to Basic Pybotics Episode 2. Last episode we looked at coding a motor with GPIO Zero. This episode we're going to look at adding in another motor and adding ultrasonic eyes. Last episode we showed you how to attach a motor to the L9110S H bridge. That time we were using the right hand side, this time we're going to be using the left. So we need to attack we need to first unscrew the top of the H bridge to fit the wire in, and then we need to screw it back in so we lock the wire in place so it doesn't come out. There's one done, now we need to do the same on the other side. Make sure it's nicely in place so it will fall out and... and Make your circuit not work. There we go. Next we need to wire it up. We need to do the same thing as we did before, so use the two spare pins on the H bridge and attach them to numbered pins on the Pi. We're going to use pin 3 and 4, but you could choose any numbered one. Now we need to add now we need to add a wire for that goes from the port that attaches the that attaches the battery to the H bridge to a ground pin here. So any pin with the minus symbol on. And then you need to add it onto the same row as the black side on your port. Now it's time to code our second motor. It's the code is a lot like the code we used that last time, just instead of only on one motor adding two. First, we need to define the second motor. This time we're using pins three and four instead of pins fourteen and fifteen, which we used the other one. Now that we're using two motors, it would be easier to define functions for each of the motors. I just need to put the define block and then you need to write what you call it. In this case I'm using F for forward. And S for stop. Once you define a function, everything that's inside the function must be indented. Then, as, then as well as in one dot forward, you just need to do n two dot forward. Then that is your forward function. It's do exactly the same for your stop function. Right, 
we've done that you need to run all the functions. In this case you need to run the forward function wait five seconds then we want the stop function to make all the motors stop. Once you run the code it should work. Now to make our code even better we can make it be a variable speed. At the moment we're only using half speed which is 0 0.5. And then how we do it is by inside the forward function we put in a variable called speed which we change where we've put in our speed at the moment to be that variable. We've done that well, when we see the, the forward function here, we put in what speed we like, but it has to be between 0 and 1, otherwise, the code won't work. 1 is the fastest and 0 is the slowest. If you wanted speed 1, then you'd, if you wanted the fastest speed, then you'd put 1 in. Then, if you wanted of a quite slow speed, then you put in something like 0 0.2. To make a good robot, you don't only have to go forward, but you also need to be able to do backwards. Here's how it's done. First you need to create the backwards function and then change everything where it says forward to backward. Now after you've done that you need to run it. We're going to change the speed of both of them to half. This that only sleeps three seconds. between them and then we just need to make sure that it's going backwards onto the next then it should go from forwards wait three seconds to it's backwards to make a good robot you don't only want it to go forwards and backwards but also left and right Here's how you can make it do these other directions. First you need to define the left and right functions. And then you need to make it go the left and right directions. You don't only do... There's no function for left and right natural code so instead you need to make one where to go forwards and the other one go backwards you need to do the same for right but instead the other way around so that the other motor goes forwards and the other one goes backwards you have done that After you've done that, you need to add it into your main code. So first we're going to make it go forwards, and then instead, forwards, then backwards. Then afterwards, we're going to make it go left and right. you've done that you should go forward wait three seconds go backwards wait three seconds go left wait three seconds and then go right wait, and then wait three seconds first goes forwards then backwards then left then right
These are ultrasonic eyes. How they work is by firing ultrasound, a sound that we can't hear, out of this transmitter. It bounces off an object and then comes into this receiver. And then, depending on how long it takes for it to bounce off the object to come back to the receiver, that's they can then convert it into a measurement of distance. The ultrasonic eyes run on five volts, but you don't really want to be sending anything above three point three volts into the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins, or it might damage the Pi. That's why we use a voltage divider to reduce the voltage to 3.3 .3 volts. This is a simple voltage divider circuit. It uses two resistors. Voltage out should equal resistor 2 divided by resistor 1 plus resistor 2 times by the input voltage. Our resistor 1 is a 1k resistor and our resistor 2 is a 2k resistor. When we put this into a formula we get 2 divided by 1 plus 2 times 5, which should equal 3.3. Here's how to wire out the ultrasonic eyes. As you can see, there are four ports on the ultrasonic eyes. VCC, trigger, echo and ground. Now we need to add on the ultrasonic eyes to the breadboard. Now we need to make a voltage divider using our two resistors. First you get the 2K resistor and plug it from the ground from ground to a spare to a spare row on the breadboard. This is very fiddly so you might have to have a couple of goes. Then you from the same row you add your 1k resistor to echo, to port echo. Now we need to add the wires. The first wire should be connected to the same row as the two resistors. Then we need to plug it into a numbered pin on the Pi. For this I'm going to use pin 24. The next wire should be connected to the ground port and then to a ground pin on the Pi. The next wire should be connected from the C VCC port to a 5 volt port. The next wire is going to be connected to the trigger port and then attached to then attached to another GPO GPIO port which is one of the numbered ones. Now we're going to code the eyes. First you need to import the alternate eyes module from the GPIO0 library. In GPIO0 library it's called distance sensor. 
because that's what it does, it measures distance. And after you need to, uh, you should import the time function like we did in our motor code. After we've imported the time function, we need to define the eye, ultrasonic eyes. Here we're using is eyes, and then you need to write equals what it is, which in this case is a distance sensor. Then you need to put in which pins you used. In this case, we've done pin 24 and pin 23. After that, we need to actually make sure that it's working. In this case, we just make it print the message start, which shows that it's started. After that, we need to use the forever loop, which in this case is a while true. <clears throat> but you need to remember with a true, to put a capital T on it, otherwise it won't work. Then we need to print the distance value. And after we've printed distance, we need to actually measure the distance using ultrasonic eyes. After we've done that, we're going to use the sleep function in time to make it delay five seconds. And then it should run. As you can see it running. Then as the distance gets shorter when you put your hand in front of it and gets bigger as you take your hand away. This episode, we have coded two motors, wired up and coded ultrasonic eyes to make them detect distances. Next episode, you will be showing you how to make a basic Raspberry Pi robot that moves around and detects obstacles using the ultrasonic eyes. For um, then, bye. For now, bye. bye. <laughs>